Welcome to Numb Bills Fan Podcast, episode number 213. I'm your host, David Palermo, and currently live on Instagram. So get on Instagram, subscribe on iTunes to the podcast, follow along on Twitter for breaking thoughts, the only thing it's good for. Uh, also, Facebook, occasionally I'll post up there, but really Instagram has everything instant from photos, quick thoughts on your Instagram live, and that's during the day, workflow, whatever flow. You know, so really, it doesn't matter to me how you get to Numbills Fan Podcast. Just get there. And if you need anything, shoot me a DM. You're wondering why we haven't podcasted in a minute. Just kind of busy with life, working late. But hey, this is a cool kids edition. Drive in, you know, have uh, a special guest in the room. And I have to talk very uh, adult. So I will speak nice while they play Minecraft. Because that's what it's about. So, as always, some Bills chatter because you know I can't keep my mouth shut and I've been stewing all week. So, I got some notes here. And a little preview is, uh, do you buy in the team? Okay, got it. Uh, don't forget Shaq Lawson won the game. Mm-hmm, we'll get to that. And if you like Tyrod Taylor, you had to like Josh Allen and vice versa. Okay, no, no ifs, ands, or buts. And if you like McDermott's tough team, well, why didn't you like Rex Ryan's tough team? That said, here we go. Brought to you by PunchDrunkSports.com. And uh, follow them along at PunchDrunk. And subscribe to their podcast as well. Really funny. Three comedians. Love them all. They're great. So check them out. All right, so here we are, podcast 213, and uh, to set the scene, I went to Marshall's yesterday night, and I got an awesome tracksuit, and I hit the lottery. I've never found a matching tracksuit in all my years of going to Marshall's, pretty much just to find a tracksuit, and then walking out with things I don't need. So I'm sitting in it, it's got some gold stripes on the side, like a nice thick one, so you can see if you're on Instagram Live right now, you could see this. The, the video is only temporary. So, I got some nice tigers on here. Um, some kind of duck looking thing. And some, uh, I don't know what you call it, some some flowers. They all match. I'm I'm pretty stoked. And uh, kind of like a darkish, darkish tracksuit. You know, I'm not wearing no bright colors. So, here we go. So uh, I'll set the scene for you as I recline. Um, you know, Drunk Dean bailed on the game. He honestly got too drunk the night before. I feel bad, but he got too drunk the night before, and he was my ride, and uh, he bailed. So Jeff and I ended up chilling. I rode out alone. He sat next to me. And don't get me wrong, we were trying to hate. You know, we're kind of over. I think I could speak for Jeff a little bit here. We're kind of over this whole McDermott, McBean bullshit. Oh, kids edition. And um it it's kinda like you have to look at it in a analytical standpoint, but then you have to be a fan and remember that have some fun. And the Jaguars game was really just a fun game. Uh a a, a lot of penalty yards. Walt Anderson needs to just not referee ever again. You know my rule with refs. You don't get smarter the older you get with your eyesight. Okay? So use the camera technology available and make it happen. But they don't. So it was a pretty awful long game to be at, frankly. And I was trying to hate on the Bills. I'll be honest. I was trying to hate on McDermott. But then all my favorite things that happened with, like, uh, my other favorite Bills happened. And don't forget, Shaq Lawson won the game. Let's be real here. Shaq Lawson took Leonard Fournette out of the game. That was awesome. At the same time, Leonard Fournette left the sideline and went up to back hide, back up hide. But make no mistake, I, I felt that watching the game that Tremaine Edmonds 
was they, they were pretty much moving him out of the way and running right up the middle a lot, a lot, on, on the second level, I would say. So that's just me. Um, you know, sideline to sideline, Tremaine gets there, you know, on the outside edges. He's, he's, he's really, really fun to watch, really fun to watch. But Leonard Fournette was, to me, I, I sort of had like nine, not, not exactly, but like two drives in a row where they just ran down the field and it was like chunk yards, like 14 yards, 12 yards, 11 yards. I think they ran for 15 yards. So like one, you know, and Leonard Fournette, I think he has like one run over 20 yards or something this whole season, if that. And, you know, honestly, I say it all the time with the Bills. I really think you can usually run the ball on the Bills a lot. The Bills pass defense, number one in the league. Credit to them, number one pass defense in the league. I can't even... I got nothing to say. The defense is good. The defense is good. They are fun. And guess what? The offense was good, too. Josh Allen, is he not the easiest dude to root for? Really fun time with Josh Allen. I I love rooting for that kid. At the same time, if your idea of developing a quarterback and your franchise quarterback that, you know, you're developing and you – you know, didn't surround him with anything to protect him with an offensive line who's getting better, I guess. Um, damn, how many concussions do you want him to get his rookie year? I, I love that he has more rushing yards than Tyrod Taylor, but let's get something straight. If you hated Tyrod Taylor and you love this Josh Allen, and I know a lot of you people are really that. You people, a lot of people are just, Tyrod's got to go. Tyrod's got to go. And then Josh Allen, this performance is acceptable. And, yeah, it is acceptable. It's fine. He won the game. And that was my whole thing with Tyrod Taylor. Game plan for it, defense. Worry about stopping it until you can't. You know, and all the people, again, hating on Tyrod. Anybody but Tyrod. And, and you know what Tyrod Taylor could do for you people who hated Tyrod? He could throw the ball to the sidelines. Pretty nice that Nate Peterman could not do. And you can argue to me, again, that the Bills are still – stupid on offense like i don't want to see josh allen die but i want to see the bills win so like I, i'm all about josh allen running don't get me wrong it's just he's already gone out and died with a concussion so um you know i really i want to have a, a, a win that feels like, it was awesome. Not, ah, ha, ha, laughing at the other team. Ha, ha, losers. Ah, ha, over stupid penalties. And but that ain't winning to me. Winning is you come in with your best game plan against their best game plan. And who can make the adjustments? That's it. It ain't cheap shots. It isn't getting some baloney calls here. You know... I mean, I should actually just read my notes because I made a set list here. I know, surprising notes. So the team offense is uh, better because they said they finally did what I've been telling you they need to do. And I'm not the only one um, for months here. Hi, Eric Turner at Cover One. Hold on. Let me hit wave, dude. Let me know when you want to start going live on Instagram, fam. It'll be awesome. I'll come join you. Hold on. Look at my Cannibal Corpse coffee cup. See? Great death metal from Buffalo. They live now in Florida, though. Yo, Eric, look at my tracksuit, though. Dicks. Or not dicks. Marshall's 20 bucks. Hold on. Look at that. Look at that. Uh-huh. Close. I know. I don't know. Live it up. All right, so I made some notes. So I'm all about the McBean and uh, McDermott train if they keep listening to me. So, guys, thanks for listening. I'm sure you've been listening to the podcast because, you know, you have a life. Um, so what I've been saying is about Josh Allen has always just been the theme of, uh, hey, let's get it together and make sure that, you set up your quarterback in the best position to succeed. I look at it like a business. 
and it is a business. And I am taught that the quarterback is the most important spot on the roster. Okay, cool. So am I cool with the players that the Bills pick up every draft? Honestly, yeah, I will support every player. And really, my beef with the draft is I can't get in the surface draft, and I can't really follow a 1,000 players. So I will follow a guy like, say, Cover One, Eric Turner over here. And I will find a guy like Nate Peterman, and I'll be like, wow, this guy's good. He's in a pro-ready offense, and, you know, give him a couple years, he'll be ready to play. Not put him in the first year, but we've gone down this road a lot, so we don't need to. Us Bills fans are kind of fatigued of it. So I've been saying forever that the Bills just need to have a veteran quarterback around them. So, and the the things that Josh Allen was saying about Derek Anderson the first week is, Oh, it's been it's been awesome to have him here because, well, he's played a bunch of a, a bunch of games, you know. And my whole beef is I, I want this kid to learn how to prepare because the offensive coordinator should be busy doing offensive coordinator type things, not doubling up alongside David Coley, the quarterbacks coach, and at the same time having a vet that can marry the two between the player that's young and developing into the coach that's even the player's coach, okay? So the position coach, I mean. Their relationship is only going to be so close. If you have a Derek Anderson involved, per se, like they do now, and I like that they kept him, honestly, like dead serious, because if you're watching NFL around the league, there's too many quarterbacks coming in and being productive, way too many. And I've always been on board with you can run the ball. I've, I've bought the Bills hype. But then I had to remember that these Bills fans have seen cutting edge football. And Marv Levy's team would still cut through the NFL now. The same thing. And that's when Andre Reid's getting clobbered over the middle. Okay? Uh, so when the game has evolved to passing and you have a raw quarterback that the experts say needs extra time and now he's saying okay that vet quarterback Allen is, is saying like night and day pretty much like as far as prepare preparedness if that's even a word I hate that word but you know I learned my trade of, of, of a skilled trade by watching people and, and going okay how do I do this but when I had that guy that's been there a little bit the buffer you know of how do I price my jobs before I approach somebody? And then he could show you. That's kind of where I'm looking at. Like, look, coaches ask me to do this, and I want to do this. And and and, the, and the vet QB will be like, no, 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 no. You know, and, and do I do I respect like AJ McCarron? Sure. Do I respect Nate Peterman? Yeah, I, I honestly do. I just think he was thrown into it early. He wasn't supposed to be in. He was a perfect third quarterback. Run the scout team. Do your thing. You know, work on your stuff. So. Uh, the segment of because they did what I said they should do that we're on right now. So the next part is um, I already covered some of this. Throwing creates more opportunities. See the Patriots. I can't tell you how many times the Pats throw up the ball when all hell is just n- no hope. And they get some kind of idiot clobbering Brady or not or getting pushed into him or Brady doesn't get a an intentional grounding or whatever, throws it up, and the ball goes out of bounds, and they get a spot foul at the one on P.I., and they rush the ball in, or, or, or Brady does, you know? And, and we've seen that way too many times. I've said it for years. My father and I were talking about this. I had this conversation 20 years ago. Why is pass interference not 15 yards in the NFL? It's baloney. It is such baloney. They got to let these defensive backs play. I miss the days of just football, of just, hey, we understand it's football, okay? And we have to remember is the NFL is in litigation throughout the courts, and they have to come back with some data that, hey, from year here to year here, we implemented X amount of Dollars and fines, we've changed the game. Here's some concussion data. We've implemented the safety crap. Yada, 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 yada. 
And then it's going to take a league like the XFL, which you can laugh at. But that league starts when the NFL CBA is up, uh, 2020. So um, what that means to me is the NFL is going to adopt some camera angles and all sorts of maybe infrastructure from that. And it's going to make the NFL better. And fix the SH, I can't say that word because this is kids edition bills. I you got to give me a, a better than you're just joining. You got to make your case if you want to join, fam. You're like, what are you doing? You got a tracksuit on? Get a tracksuit on and you can join the video. Just saying. No, no disrespect. But I'm in the middle of a rant that now I just forgot what I'm even talking about because your name is so funny. That's right. Send those hearts. Love you more. So, um, damn, I really forgot what I was saying here. Got so distracted. Um, so let me just, I'm sure it'll come out. So in general, what we saw from the Bills against the Jaguars was cool because it was a modern day offense. Let's let's be real here. We've been, uh, the next thing I said on the list is throw deep. You know what I mean? Like get some receivers who get separation. How's that? Somebody fast. So let me join it is not good enough. You're ruining this podcast, sir. I, don't, I shouldn't assume you're a sir. But so look, work, play action, throwing deep. My favorite part about Sammy Watkins and Tyrod Taylor was the fact, and, and even um, all the other Bills quarterbacks, is that they would just throw it deep. Like Kyle Orton. We can rip on Kyle Orton all we want. All we want. But the Bills were a bad team. I would say that Bills team was better than the team that made the playoffs last year. So, for me, you throw it deep, you get those pass interferences. You get those opportunities to play to the game. It's chess. You have to play to the rules in hand. And the Bills can sell me on this run first thing, all this, whatever. But like I was saying, Bills fans have seen cutting-edge football. So, for years, I do really think that the quarterback position is kind of overrated. If you see Nick Foles and now Carson Wentz is in and it's kind of like, oh, that's what I was saying the XFL. It's like, I want to see fresh minds, you know? And another league coming out is going to create competition for for the NFL to finally get these rules of officiating fix. The, the, the problem with the NFL to me is we're not even watching the best football we could watch. And that's like the disgusting part. It's not even like, the, the Jaguars game was hard to sit at. It, it really was. And like I said earlier, I was trying to hate on the Bills. I was trying to hate because I'm not down with the process. You know, i got to see some changes. And um, you know what? Like I said earlier, the Bills are doing what we want, what I wanted to see. A lot of my friends and other people I talk with wanted to see, which is get some speedy receivers and be a little bit faster reacting. The McKenzie pickup was cool. But, like, when you're at the waiver priority, you get that. You get that guy. You know, but it shouldn't be middle of the season we're figuring this out. Foster's come around at receiver. Really awesome. Um, Josh Allen, he, we talked about already. So how do you not love rooting for that kid? He's easy to root for. Tremaine Evans, so fun to watch, so fast. Just, you know, a lot of growing, though, you know, for him. Like I was saying, when I'm watching chunk yards, you know, between the tackles, and uh, they did a nice job uh, of really targeting him and, and blocking him out of the play in a lot of those run plays uh, before Fournette left the game. Because like I said, Shaq Lawson won that game. So next topic, and this is again a kid's edition here, so I can't really rail hard, so I'll rail hard another time because this is a whole separate podcast. The Buffalo Bills show me how tough they are. Shaq Lawson, a Rex pick, right? A corny Rex pick. is the guy who has this Buffalo Bills team looking tough and feeling tough and getting everybody fired up. And Sean McDermott's like, you're not going to come in here and smack us around because we're tough. We're tough. Okay. Sure. But honestly, Rex Ryan said he wanted to be a bully, right? Everybody else hated that. So, Again, it's fan them. After a while, I feel like I'm communicating about fifth-grade conversations in my head, which is just like, 
how do you love McDermott and you hate Rex when like I loved Rex and I can support McDermott and I wish him the best. I really do. I don't want to see a coaching change. I want to see changes on the field. I want to see Calvin Benjamin get less snaps and he did last two games, a lot less. Okay, and on a side note, Calvin, so no you're not listening. But in case your family member tells you are or something. Or that you know, let you know. I did see you when Josh Allen was scrambling, run out of bounds like the play was over. It was awful. I wish I could find it on tape. I didn't check Twitter. I had no time to check Twitter. I've been working hard all week. So, there's something, you know, dude, I saw it right in front of me, uh, 331. And Josh Allen needs to do their Sandlot football time. And you're doing absolutely nothing. The kid has an arm like a rocket. He can throw it 50 yards across the field horizontally. No problem. And, you know, even if it only goes 15 yards and you do the trajectory on that, it's what, like 65, 70 yards of a throw on a rope. Calvin Benjamin and fast. So, you know, my whole beef has been, say what you want about Rex teams, those dudes played hard. And they always played hard. And I supported Rex, even though I hated Rex and the Jets, because I personally witnessed a lot of Rex games where inferior talent-wise Jets teams will come in and just wipe the floor of the Bills, just make the Bills look absolutely stupid. With one of the worst quarterbacks ever in Mark Sanchez, okay? And he would take the bullet for the team. And that was cool, you know? But my favorite thing about McDermott, I've said before, is that he was a wrestling dude. And those guys are tough people. So I know he has it in him. But he's got to do this, you know, for himself, to, to what he has to do. You know, and he's going to feel it out, do whatever. But I love the offensive philosophy, the adjustment and the philosophy. Just, dude, just just play some modern football. Because you're telling me ownership ain't watching the game with Bean, which they watch. Terry Bagula watches every game with Brandon Bean in the box. You're telling me uh, uh, you have control of a team and you're watching, like, the third-string quarterback of the 49ers come in and do pretty damn good, as in, like, pretty damn good for Bills numbers as a Bills fan. So if you like and are flipping out over Josh Allen and hated Tyrod Taylor, I don't know what your problem is, okay? So I'll pull it up right now. So here's my thing. I expect Josh Allen to do this, his running thing, for a while. And, um, you know, work the play action, which is smart. That's all I want to see because when you look at the stats, a lot of these quarterbacks are really good off play action, and and even the Bills are killing me with it, and they wouldn't do it enough. <clears throat> Excuse me. And my whole thing is a quarterback, you don't want a lot of change. And when we as fans buy in, like, okay, this guy's going to be the guy. And we understand we're in it for a three- to five-year haul here. You know, Tyrod Taylor only had three years. But honestly, I had Tyrod Taylor fatigue too because he has the same syndrome that I think Nate Peterman has, which is just do everything to script. And um, Josh Allen was surrounded by a pile of bodies. It looked like a cartoon to me. And this arm just comes out and a ball comes off his arm and gets completed like a million yards down the field. And my favorite part about Ryan Fitzpatrick was his toughness and how, <clears throat> and how like he, he how funny he was. But you know, it's kind of corny. Josh Allen to me, I don't know the kid, but he seems like he likes to bust chops, you know. And the vets support him. And he's got my support. And again, it's never been about the players. It's about how you acquire the players. It's about giving up equity. You know, I tell the story all the time. I put a Wade Boggs card on my spokes. I was like, ah, oh, name sounds kind of familiar. I don't know, whatever. And then I hit me. I'm like, damn. It was only a Topps card anyways. But still. As a kid, when you got nothing, you got your Wade Boggs card. I think it was a 92. Mm, maybe not. It's a white rim around it and uh yeah never mind 
So it hit the spokes. All right. So do I love what the draft can entail next year? Sure. But I'm going to do a whole little podcast here about an actually uh, an end of the year video wrap up with Jeff Knight, Adam Deacon, Trunk Dean, and uh, Mike Smith. That oh wait, I forgot a guy. Adam Deacon, Mike Smith, Dean. Adam Deacon's going to produce it. If you remember Deacon, it's going to be a fun video. So, um, yeah, Jeff Knight will be there too. And I want to have an under the year wrap up because I could argue to you too that they're, they're, the, the Bills hard headed decision at quarterback really cost them the playoffs, I think, just because we see so many other quarterbacks come in and do it. I mean, Matt Barkley, come on. One game makes it a case that he should start. And I, and I said it on the podcast before. It was like, you kind of wonder about Matt Barkley because he was in a crappy situation in Philly. You know, he was drafted by Chip Kelly two years there, I believe, maybe three. or I could be wrong. Was it three? And then he ends up in Chicago, gets hurt um, when he got signed to the Bengals, so, uh, which was last season. So he replaced McCarron on the Bengals pretty much, I believe. So very interesting, Matt Barkley. And the thing with quarterbacks is I can buy into them for a long time because they're the only position – they're the position that's the mar- – look at – you got to look at who pays the bills. The quarterback pays the bills. Come on. How many games do the, the Cowboys and the Giants have on, like, Sunday night every year? It's, like, so stupid. All those teams. Like, Eli Manning. Oh, my – I'm so sick of it. You know, so to me, I just – I, I want to see football football. And that's what we saw is we saw – classic football we saw it, like like some people were saying a hockey atmosphere at one bills driving against the jaguars so what i want to see from the bills is i want to see the bills carry this modern day offensive thrown down the field creating opportunity for more opportunities of penalties more opportunities for pass interference more opportunities to look down the field to make connections because the thing is with football is it's not the you have 11 people on each side, okay? The, the the variables of all 11 people to do what to script that's going to line up against the other 11 is crazy. It's just never going to happen. It's a numbers game. That's why it's so fun, this game. It's never going to be perfect, okay? And the, the, the most perfect teams you find a lot of times are very simple if you want to flex on the 90s bills, right? So think about this. I... Tom Brady, he's really good. So is Drew Brees. So is Aaron Rodgers. So is whatever. Your team needs to be straight pre-snap. That's my biggest disappointment with this team. They need to be straight pre-snap. Okay? Because as much credit as Peyton Manning gets for whatever he did pre-snap, that's great. You know, he was reading defenses, being loud about it. He'd troll you, da 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 The guy that you guys hate, a lot of people hate, Rex Ryan, would actually put a lot of dummy crap out there so that it would clog up the data. For Peyton Manning and the other likes, right? So I think Peyton Manning kind of did too much where you might have tried it too hard. But my whole point is when you keep seeing live bullets and live defenses and have the opportunity to work it out, Josh Allen offers enough where he doesn't seem to necessarily right now at least this past game, make that dumb throw that he made before he was hurt, which is, you know, again, it's only one game. But he shows me enough to give him time, you know? And I've never been like, get rid of Josh Allen. I was always just like, let him fall to you in the draft. I'm down with any of the top six in the draft. Okay, but you look at Lamar Jackson, and he's doing some things, and and. I try to separate what the media says I should like and what ESPN says I should like and what I think is happening in football. And I think what's happening in football, believe it or not, is if you can run the ball, as always, you can dominate. And a lot of times, I think fans and media, we all have a lot of pressure. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if... um, you know, maybe McDermott was on the hot seat or not, or is. I have no clue what the evaluation is. I don't, like I said, I want things to play out. I was trying to hate at the Jaguars game. I had a hard time hating. 
And the Bills game was fun. It was just a fun win. And, you know, no issues. Did I leave two minutes early? Yeah. But it was already like, the game ended so late. I had to drive back to the roster. I'm tired. The Bills had to win locked in. But here's what I expect. Don't forget, Shaq Lawson won the game. Already touched on this a million times. He took Leonard Fournette out. Two touchdowns, 100 yards rushing, not even mid-third quarter, I believe, by that point. Like, they could have just kept giving him the ball. That's a fact. Okay? So, my whole point in this podcast for episode number 213, Kids Edition, is um, to wrap up here. The things you love McDermott about are the things I love Rex Ryan about, which was, if you're looking at the Jaguars game, which was toughness, right? You want to see toughness. And it's ironic that the guy who never gets any credit, Shaq Lawson, anytime he's asked about from McDermott, well, he's getting better, I guess. From what I know, his work habits are better. Oh, okay. But to me, that says a lot. Like, they say a lot in pressers that you should really pay attention to. And sometimes they'll try to derail you, but they keep derailing, 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 and then they, boop, derailing, derailing, derailing. Oh, I love my players, love my players, love my players. And they throw a little shade on something. Uh-oh. Pay attention to it. Honestly, they talk to their players through the media, too. But I love McDermott for going to bat for his team like that. I expect that out of him. He's a wrestling guy. I've said it forever. No one's tougher than a wrestler. I'll argue that with everybody. No one. Argue with me. See? No one. Anyways, as always, brought to you by uh, numbillsfan.com. So get over there. Follow along on Instagram, as you can see if you're on the live video right now. Twitter, Facebook. So to close out here, I expect the Bills to go into Miami, who has, I believe, the 27th ranked offense passing, and stomp the shit out of them. Kids edition. Stomp, you know, play really good football, okay? That's what they got to do. They got to go in there and dominate. Show me your defense and be consistent as it should be, right? Everybody, defense is really fun to watch. Matt Milano is just, he does a great job for the cookies. Milano cookies. You ever had them? Mm-hmm. And what's funny is my mom was just in Milan. Yeah, for about a month visiting her mom and sister. Her mom's in a nursing home, my grandma. Yeah, my mom's from Italy. Real story. You can't tell my tracksuit, can you, with the gold and the tigers. And the beautiful locks I love. So just show me Sean McDermott and Bills and McBean and, and, and players that you guys can handle this, this damn Dolphins team. They're not good, okay? Put the final nail in the coffin. Let's win strong. This, the, the, like I said, my beef has been the beginning of the schedule is tough. Give your team the best chance to win don't tell me you're gonna tank to get the best pick when last year you already had six top six picks in the top three rounds a pair in each round top three rounds and just not blew them but i think spent frivolously when the year before you slide backwards in the draft and get trey edwards or um tremaine oh my god what i'm saying trey white sorry about that Shadavius White is the best cornerback in the NFL. <laughs> like, nobody does anything on him. DeAndre Hopkins has, like, a crazy catch. That's it. But nobody does anything on, uh, uh, on Trey White. And he's fun. He's fun. So, again, Buffalo, go into Miami, take care of your business, make it right, and have a good time. Leave Bills fans with some hope. Okay, the past is the past. We're finally now on a path where I like where the Bills are at. Got receivers getting separation. Got a quarterback throwing quarterbacks throwing the ball downfield. McCoy, I don't know what's going on with him. I frankly think that McCoy doesn't get enough opportunity. That's just me because there are series where Ivory just gets the ball. for Even after McCoy is a good series, just... Off the field. Cold. Do I think he's shot? I don't know. I have not watched any tape. But live, during the games and at the games, I don't think he gets enough opportunity. Just saying that. Um, But at the same time, it's a team game. It doesn't matter. 
You know, you should be able to scheme something up. When you're a quarterback, you see these. My point about the veteran quarterbacks is that are really good is th- there's a hole in the defense somewhere. 11 on 11 is never going to be perfect. I know this is like a Tarantino movie where I'm everywhere, but find the mismatches. All right, so right there. It's all pre-snap stuff. That's why I get pissed when the Bills get penalties pre-snap. Like, get, get up to the line and get ready. Do your thing, you know? And just be tight. So, there's always a hole once the play develops. And Brady's really good at finding that. All these good quarterbacks can find it. You know, is Pat Mahomes getting having six touchdowns or something crazy in a game? I don't know why, but I do know defenses catch up. Look at Dak Prescott, but Mahomes might be on another level, okay? And don't even get me on Mahomes because if he was in Buffalo, I can't guarantee he'd be doing what he's doing in Kansas City. No way. No way. All right? I watched McNabb come from Syracuse, go to Philly under that coach Andy Reid there. And go from a running quarterback to uh, try to be a pocket passer, save his life. And that's what I'm hoping you could do with, with Josh Allen. And the thing is, is he runs like a damn deer. He's awesome. He's thick. He is your Cam Newton type. I just don't want to see him get concussed. Because the NFL is going to cover themselves as well. And he really shouldn't get concussed. Because he's going to miss a lot of games. And my most hated quarterback of all time is probably Troy Aikman because he's so overrated. But he had to leave because of concussions, right? Steve Young had to leave because of concussions. Again, three players for Josh Allen and a left tackle. That was a franchise left tackle. And he already has a concussion. So all good, winning the game, a meaningless game. They're not making the playoffs, most likely, right? Do I want them to? Sure. But your priority is developing Josh Allen, and the dude's head is going to turn into jello if he doesn't stop, like, getting crushed. Is it fun? Yes, 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 I love it. I'm just talking future of the team. I want a quarterback. If we're talking no turnover, no whatever, and then I'll say, oh, I want a tough team. I get it. I get it. Like, trust me. And Madden, I'm running with Josh Allen. I'm a winner. I mean, I'm not, but, like, I'm a winner. <laughs> winner mentality. So... Hopefully you enjoyed this morning drive-in preview here. I am done here. And um, so it's rated PG, almost 13. A couple little. So as we're saying bowl, I don't know what else to say. That's the truth. So as always, I'm your host, David Palermo. Tune in on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this drive. And the Bills win in Miami, right? Brought to you by Punch Drunk Sports. And follow them along on Instagram. And Twitter as well. And if you are ever lost, numbillsfan.com has everything. And if you'd like to donate to the show, there's actually a donate button. And um, if you buy anything through Amazon, turn off your, um, go to numbillsfan.com and click the Amazon link. And if you click through, a small little portion kicks back to me. Um, And it will help support, like, the web server costs and all that stuff and, like, server space for uploading to and the website and whatever stupid crap it's really dumb but if you can do that um if it, if the amazon link doesn't come up just gotta turn your ad blocker off just for numb bills fan and uh you can turn your ad blocker back on but it really you know anything you think about it, i think it might even send you back to your app and it contains a code but it's free to do that and i never think to mention it i've had it up for about eight months but the Amazon click-through link really does throw an awesome kickback. So um, right now I don't have a Patreon. I don't have enough content to make exclusive content. Uh, maybe will one day. But frankly, I just want to give you something that you want to listen to. It's not about volume of content always. It's entertainment value. These are my honest thoughts. Um, philosophical thinker on this. Bill stuff. And if you're new to this, I'm not really a huge party or anything. So... Um, I'm into like making noise with guitars and stuff. So, um, love the bills. It breaks up the monotony of life at the same time. Doing a podcast has kind of felt like, you know, definitely an obligation at times, but 
again, I keep getting messages from people. Hey, when's the podcast coming out? I can't thank you enough. Seriously, it keeps me going. And uh, I just love talking to people. So if you'd like, shoot me an email as well, dave at uh, numbillsfan.com. And um, if there's any suggestions, you know, follow along. And as always, tune in on Instagram because it's the easiest for me. I It's so instant. I could be at work. You want to know what's the latest thought? Hit it. It's going to be there, you know. So that could be me in the car. I like to do, like, a little bit nicer reproduction. So Facebook Live videos, YouTube. I like to have, like, a banner up. But I guess I'll just cater to the format here. So, as always, thank you for supporting. And uh, I'm your host, David Palermo. And uh, have a good night. Cool bills.